Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Now, the church has gathered. And here we are. And I'd like to uh, begin the service this morning by reading Psalm 95. Um, but before I do that, uh, there's a couple of names in this psalm that I'd like to just kind of uh, remind us of what they mean, just so that they have some context as, as I read the psalm. And that is Meribah and Massa. Uh, if you don't remember or maybe never encounter, encountered those uh, places in the scriptures, it goes back to Exodus 17.7 where the Israelites, uh, in, in fact, let me turn to Exodus 17.7. 7. In fact, I'll, I'll start in verse 1. It says, then, and then all the congregation of the sons of Israel journeyed by stages from the wilderness of sin according to the command of the Lord and camped at Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Now, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the Israelites, uh, you know, traveling in the wilderness. And it goes on to say, Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me, and why do you test the Lord? And down in verse 7, Moses named the place Massa, which means test and Meribah which means quarrel so he named the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarrel of the sons of Israel and because they tested the Lord saying is the Lord among us or not so with that as a preface I'll read Psalm 95 so let's give our attention to the word of the Lord this morning O come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for it was he who made it, and his hands Form the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you would hear his voice, do not harden your heart as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said they are a people who err in their heart and they do not know my ways. Therefore I swore in my anger, truly they shall not enter into my rest. So come let us sing for joy to the Lord and turn to page two in the hymnal. <coughs> Of course, let's all stand as we sing, Come Christians, Join to Sing, page two. <clears throat> Come Christians, Join to Sing, Alleluia, Amen, our praise to Christ our King. Alleluia, amen. Let all with heart and voice before his throne rejoice. Praise is his gracious choice. Alleluia, amen. Come, lift your hearts on high. Alleluia, amen. Praises fill the sky. Alleluia. Amen. He is our guide and friend. To us he'll condescend. His love shall never end. Alleluia. Amen. Praise yet 
our Christ again. Alleluia, amen. Life shall not end the strain. Alleluia, amen. On heaven's blissful shore, His goodness will adore. Singing forevermore. Alleluia. Turn to page 5. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. Page 5. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing My great Redeemer's praise The glories of God and King The triumphs of his grace my gracious master and my god assist me to proclaim to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of thy name jesus the name that charms our fears that bids our sorrow see Music in the sinner's ears, tis life and hell and peace. Hear in me, death, his praise ye dumb, your roots and tongues employ. Ye blind, behold, your Savior come, and ye lame for joy. He breaks the power of cancelled sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avail for me. Thanks again for that good music. Uh, I envy those folks who can sit behind that piano and make good sounds come out of it, and a guitar and make good sounds come out of them. Even a voice and make good sounds come out of that voice. I, I have a big, strong voice and can't hardly carry a tune in a bucket. Uh, but praise God, I do appreciate it. The, the, uh, I have to know a song really, really well, I must say. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I do, I do enjoy singing. Uh, <laughs> I've done a lot of singing behind the wheel of a truck going down the road really loud, too. I know people look at that driver and think, what in the world is he doing? I had certain songs that I would sing whenever I got tired. And if I couldn't remember the words, I would pull off the side of the road and I would walk around the truck a while. <laughs> uh, but uh, haven't haven't trucked for many years, so I don't have to do that now. When I drive my, yes, sir. I, I see that hand. Yeah, real quickly, we're going to pass around the card here for Mr. Ed, just so you know it's coming around. With yes. Him. If you wouldn't mind signing it, Mr. Ed, had, uh, a couple of surgeries just to encourage him. Ms. Mary here brought it, so if you'd like to sign it, we'll pass it around. So that's what. Amen. Doing. Thank you for reminding me of that as well. I have a note here for us to be praying for Ed. Let's make sure that we do that daily, uh, several times a day. Poor old Ed's really struggling. Um, whenever he got, I think he's only had one surgery, but they've done a lot of things to him. Uh, they considered another surgery, but I'm not so sure that's going to happen. Ed likely is moving away from here. Uh, he might be moving to Salem. He's been accepted there in an assisted living uh, facility uh, there near the DeMars, Doug and um, Valerie uh, so that the, the owner of that place has already accepted him there. Poor old Ed uh, has a lot of changes coming uh, so pray for him with that with patience. Pray for the guy that's next to him in his room as well. The guy is very foul constantly and he needs to know the Lord 
uh, and Ed on occasion will get a, a word in here and there but uh, let's just pray for him uh, that he will come to know Christ I don't know his name Ed might be able to tell you that but um, while I was there he he used words that I used to be very familiar with <laughs> when I was an unbeliever uh, but uh, anyway don't forget Sunday prayer meeting tonight 6 a.m. at Ray's uh, 6 did I say a.m. Yeah. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me reset to my default <laughs> 6 p.m. tonight uh, I was up before 6 a.m. but uh, we didn't do any prayer service as a group just me all by my own self um, and I'm sure some others were doing that as well 6 p.m. tonight uh, Thursday um, Bible study as well if you tried to get on last week on our zoom that is all my fault I had a, a, a really hard time so Lord willing this Thursday at 7 I will be on zoom and I will be teaching and you will get it if you want what happened what what we did last week I have it recorded I can send that to you as an uh, attachment to an email and you're welcome to hear what Doug taught on another he did another one another uh, he's doing that that series so anyway I want to make sure that I remind you of that again today we've got a lot to do to be honest uh, we will talk about those things going forward but continue to be in prayer for the DeMar family uh, pray for Butler Bible Church I know that you will pray for our government pray for our world um, what a place we live in uh, today and what what is going on um, is is shameful in the world but it's even more shameful because of what the body of Christ is not doing and is doing some of the things we are doing uh, our sin of omission and our sin of commission and, and to be honest I say we because it's the body of Christ and even though we might not be partakers of some of that nonsense this body this body is not what this body ought to be and so let's pray for that uh, first Thessalonians 1 5 our verse of the month first Thessalonians 1 5 for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's be reminded of those verses. Uh, meditate on the word of God. The Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I meditate on your word day and night. Uh, I sing praises to you day and night. And we need to be reminded to do that very thing. Any other announcements before I pray? Anything else that I didn't say uh, ask me questions later we won't deal with that now but we we met uh, yesterday morning with uh, had a wonderful breakfast an over-the-top good breakfast at Cornfield Chapel uh, and so ask me about our our conversation there as well just talking with those folks there yes ma'am Franklin Graham is, is yeah okay as that goes around just take a take a look at that folks let's pray father as we come here with this small group of believers father you know what you're doing you know how you'll lead us. You know where we will be in the next year, two years, five years, ten years. You know all of that. Matter of fact, you've known all of that from the beginning of time. And we don't, Father. Some of those things might remain a mystery to us for a while longer. You usually do not give us a good idea of what the next few moments hold much less tomorrow or the beginning of next year or 
a full year from now. But Father, what we do know is that you are our God. You are our portion. You are our strength. You are our Savior through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that as we come here that we are reminded every day to pray for each other, to uphold each other's arms in service, and to pray for each other for strength, for wisdom, for a desire to know you better, for a desire to tell the world about something that they don't even know they need, and that is salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone shown in the word of God alone to the glory of you Father alone and Father I pray for each one here today that we all are desiring to meet with you this morning and with each and every day but on this morning may we meet with you individually as we come together corporately and may we worship you Father I pray for Ed my heart is heavy as I know many here would say the same that our hearts are heavy for him because of the struggle he's going through. And you tell us that we might live to be 70 or if by strength 80, and he has made it just beyond that 80. And Father, I pray that you would give him strength if it's your will to continue on. Heal his body, heal those things in his back and the, 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 the arthritis and the pain that he's going through. But Father, more than anything, Make your presence very well known to him. Show him, Father, that you've not left him. You haven't deserted him. And I pray, Father, that you would show us that as well here at Butler Bible. Give us the wisdom to know what to do going forward. And I pray, Father, that as we listen to you and as, we, as I speak later, as you use what I say from your word to challenge each of us as we're changed into your image. And Father, I pray for that soul here today that's never accepted your free gift of salvation. May they realize they are sinners. May they come to know you before it's too late. And may they walk away from this place today with a new life in Christ. And may the rest of us who know you, may we walk away newly challenged by your word to live in a way that we haven't lived before and that is a way that's pleasing to you a holy life before you and I give you praise for all things in Christ's name Amen <laughs>
the glory consumes like fire. What other power can raise the dead? What other name remains undefeated? Only our holy God. Come and behold in the one. Invites me to walk in Father. Only a holy God. Only my holy God. Come, behold the one, the only. Cry, sing, only forever. A
all of you should walk up here one at a time and look and see what I get to see on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that I didn't mean to be offensive <laughs> I've heard other preachers say that and uh, <laughs> I get it <laughs> but I don't have to sit back there and see what you see I had a I had a, a friend I think I've told you about Bill Hill my boss a marine who was wounded in Vietnam uh, who made the comment at one point that he married a uh, one of a set of twins of a Baptist preacher and I would ask him about coming to know Christ he even had a stroke and even then he said I'm just not ready yet and I, I don't know maybe Bill's still alive he's 14 years older than me so Bill is about to turn 77 or maybe just turned 77 because I'm about to turn 63 but Bill had this saying that he would say. I would, I would tease him about being ugly. And he had this saying, and I really wish I could write it down because it's really, I've only heard him ever say it. And he comes from Matewan, West Virginia. And so if you know a little bit about Matewan, you know he had to be related to either the McCoys in Kentucky or the Hatfields in Matewan <laughs> because... They had a little fight over a few years way back in the day, if you know about that. But anyway, he had this really cute saying, and I wish I could remember it, but it was something about uh, not having to look at what everyone else has to look at, uh, and he was thankful for that because he was so ugly. But he really wasn't <laughs> that ugly a man. I, uh, I, I tease like that too much. And I also tease that my mama used to tell me that I had to, tie a pork chop around my neck my mama said I had to tie a pork chop around my neck my neck so the dogs would play with me anyway I don't know that I was quite that ugly 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 verses 12 to 18 2nd Corinthians 3 12 to 18 now that I've told you all that you're so ugly <laughs> forgive me that is not where where I intended to go with all of that you know what, though? I'm, I must say that I'm really, I was moved by a couple of the songs this morning, and I, I like that when that happens. I, I enjoyed that. I don't know that I've heard that song, that we, the last one we sang, but I must have. Uh, I've been here long enough that I probably have heard it. I just don't remember it. But it's a beautiful song. We need songs that give us the Word of God and give us very clearly the Word of God in context even. And it's interesting that good songs will be coming from the Word of God. Good hymns and songs of praise will come from the Word of God. Uh, and it's just interesting that we still have writers today that are writing some gorgeous music, some music that should challenge us and keep us in the Word. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 18. 2 Corinthians 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verses 12 to 18. Uh, it, it's interesting that... Um, I just realized I made a mistake here with my uh, text on my page, so I'll read it from the Bible. <laughs> I, I usually print out my text that I want to read from, and I didn't get it all there. So I'll do what I ought to be doing anyway, read it right straight from the Word of God. Uh, but it's interesting that the Apostle Paul starts this section with hope. That's, that's really where I ended last week was on verse 12. Uh, and yet he starts this verse 12 with hope, and really he ends in hope as he goes through this. And yet, you don't see a whole lot of hope here as we look through this, uh, but I'm, I'm hoping, that we, hoping that we find that as we look through here. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness or boldness or frankness, uh, but the King James uses plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. It's an interesting word used there. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The same image from glory to glory. The blindness that is here, the veil that is over the reading of the Scripture. Remember when you were blind to the Scripture? Uh, I was almost 21 years old when I came to know Christ. When I, I made a profession of faith at 17, but I only made that profession to make that preacher stop, stop bugging me. And I did. I made a profession of faith, and I, I even had my girlfriend at the time who has now been my wife for almost 44 years convinced that I was a Christian um, but I was not a Christian and I came to know Christ two years after we were married we were married way too young let's see I was almost 19 and you were 13 honey <laughs> not true she was she was 18 already just kidding Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Seeing then that there is a hope, we have boldness. We know that what is coming for us, we know what we will have in Christ because of what Christ has done. Therefore, I should be bold in what I say. I should be bold in how I live. I should not be ashamed or afraid of living. And the Apostle Paul is very clear here. Because of this hope, what, does, what, can hope, what can the lack of hope do to us? The lack of hope. I see a little bit of that right now in Brother Ed. I see that Ed is losing hope. And I'm like, Ed, man, you've lived 80 years. You ought to have a little something to hope about here. And not only that, something that some of us are trying to, I'm not trying to beat Ed up here, but something that some of us have been trying to tell Ed is he sees his ministry changing. He's not able to... to, uh, to do some things with his money that he has done in the past um, so his ministries are changing but he thinks they're coming to an end and, and some of us keep telling him brother God doesn't just take a ministry from you God will replace this with something in your life so trust God here you've trusted him all these years something we need to learn but but the 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 Jews are blind any of you know any Jews that that still practice Judaism you know anybody? I, believe it or not, my mom's daddy, uh, Louis Ralph Hindley, uh, my, my wonderful granddaddy, one of the strongest men I've ever known in my life. But, but back in those days, you did everything by physical labor. Oh, he was a strong man. You have to ask me about that sometime. But my granddad was told that he had some Jew blood in him. If there's any Jew blood in him, it didn't make it to me. And if I'm, if I'm his descendant, I should have got a little bit. And I don't have what. He said he was 16% Jew. He trusted in the fact that he was a Jew. <coughs> Excuse me. He believed that one day he would be born again because the Jews all will have that veil removed. And they will all be converted. They will all be saved as a nation. But again, I've had my DNA done. I did it for somebody else in my family. I wouldn't recommend it, but I did it for somebody else so they could prove their own DNA. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, I, don't, I don't have any Jewish that show, any Jew blood that shows up in me. But it was interesting because when we were in South Africa, we were on uh, Table Mountain. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you know the story, look it up sometime. Uh, the, the, everything around it is uh, 4,900 feet below it. And you take this cable car. You stand at the bottom and you look up at the Table Mountain and you're like, I don't really want to get on that cable car and ride up. But we get up there and we're enjoying it and we're looking around and you walk to the edge and you look out and I'm a little scared of heights. So the edge was over there and I would say, yeah, that's close enough for me. But there were some Jewish people up there. And I was talking to somebody, and this person said, are you a Christian? And I'm like, how would you know that? How, what? I said, yes, I'm a, I'm a believer. And they're like, well, I heard you say something to someone else. It must have been the group we were with while we were on the cable car. The Jew comes over, and he says, well, God bless you, my boy. God bless you. You keep doing what you're doing. I said, you are, and you know, you could tell by the little thing he had on his head and the way his beard was that he was Jewish. I said, you're, he said, I'm Jewish. 
but I, I know that we are friends of many Christians. And I said, well, may we talk? He said, no, thank you. <laughs> but he was happy that I was up sharing the gospel, which was odd because that's not a Jew. Why? Because they're blinded to what? They're blinded to Christ in the scriptures. They're blinded to what the, the Old Testament law, the, the Mosaic law was trying to show to them. They're blinded. There was a veil. Now, you remember 2 Kings chapter 5. I was reminded of this by Chuck. Chuck brought this up in discipleship on Friday. I'm thinking 1 Kings. It's in 2 Kings, the story of Naaman. Remember that story of Naaman? Naaman was a mighty man of valor. He was honored by his, by his boss. He was a general. It calls him the captain, but really that word is the commander. He would have been a five-star general. <coughs> Excuse me. I say my wife is coughing, and I'm also coughing. I don't tell about my cough. I'm coughing a little too much this morning. Must be because I'm talking too much. But Naaman was this mighty man, but it says in that first, that first verse, but he was a leper. He had a problem. It also goes on and says that the Syrian army, under his, under his direction, went into Israel and took some captives, and one of them was a little girl. And I wish we could have this little girl named. I would love to have her named because I want to find her. Whenever I get to heaven, I want to look this girl up and say, they should have given you a name in Scripture. I won't say that there in heaven, I'm sure. But this little girl, I want you to think about the hardness of the heart, the hardness of people, and how some of us can be hard to certain things, and what hardness can do to us, and what it can take us to, the extremes that it can take us to. But Naaman had leprosy. That meant that Naaman was told to stay away from a certain group of people. Stay away. The Jews could not get anywhere near someone with leprosy. And this little girl said, Would God that my uh, master would go see that there is a man of God in Israel. Somebody brought that news to Nahum, and Nahum's like, Okay, let's do something. He went to his king. His king sent a letter to that king. What did the king of Israel do? Ha! Who do they think they are? Am I God? What was he blind to? Do you think he knew about Elisha? You think he knew about that guy? I'll bet he knew a lot about Elisha. He didn't like Elisha, I'm guessing. He didn't care when Elisha came to him and said, you're living a wicked life, Jehoram. You need to get right with God. These, this is a mess. He was blind. Now, Naaman was blinded to a certain extent because when Elisha sent to him, Elisha said, tell him to go do this or that. Naaman's like, I don't believe it. Am I not a man of honor? Am I not a high and lifted up person? Why didn't he come and put his hand on me and heal me? Why does why did he tell me to go wash in that dirty water of Israel? Why don't I go to Abana and Farfar? They're clean rivers. They're our rivers. Why don't I go there? He was blinded. Do you see all of this? And yet one little girl Remind, let's be reminded that it takes one little voice to be heard. We've talked about this several times when we've discussed at different points. Uh, us men have talked about how there's times when some of us plant, some of us water, some of us might, might break the ground, uh, or whatever, but God is the one that gives the increase. But often it's one little quiet voice that says, Hey, there's a God in Israel. There's a, there's a Savior who died on a cross for you. The world is blind to that. The world can't see. Do you know one of the causes of blindness in people? One of the, one of the causes is hardening of the arteries. Now, hardening of the arteries causes a lot of problems in our lives. It can, it can cause a lot of things. A nurse could tell you a lot more than I can, but, but it, it's one of the things that can cause blindness, a hardening. Some of us might have some of that hardening going on right now. But this hardening of the arteries uh, uh, stops or, 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 or um, uh, uh, slows down the, the, the blood flow into the eyes, and so that makes a problem there. It also can cause heart problems and, and other situations of, uh, because of hardening of arteries. <coughs> Imagine if the hardening of 
artery can cause that problem. What does the hardening of a heart cause? I've hardened my heart to something. I've hardened my heart to... I, I can go into so many things, but what did the Israelites harden their heart from? The Israelites taken out of Egypt, how long did they walk? I often wonder. They were out of Egypt. They were no longer in bondage and the second their backs were to Egypt, they probably thought, you know what? I kind of like it back there because all I see is desert. All I see is something that I don't want to be a part of. And they murmured and they murmured and they murmured. Meanwhile, God was walking in front of them and God was walking behind them and they still walked around <laughs> like this. They still did that. I have a friend that says often after he sees something he hasn't seen before, he'll say, take my eyes out and throw them away. I've seen everything. Or he'll say, take my ears off and throw them away. I've heard everything. And yet, the Israelites think they know. And actually, they're not using their eyes. They're not using their ears because they've hardened their hearts. And this, this leads to persistent blindness and the replacement of scriptures. Point number one, persistent blindness and the replacement of scriptures. The Israelites, the Jews, started this little thing called the Talmud. They had the Torah. You know what the Torah is? Really, it's the Pentateuch, the first five books of the, the, the Word of God. They had it. They had it memorized. They knew it up one side and down the other. There was no question. They knew it, and yet they decided they needed something else. They needed the Talmud. You ought to read some of the Talmud sometime and find out what the Talmud tells the Jew to do to a Christian, an infidel. What the Talmud tells to do to anyone that claims to be Christ. It's not, it's not nice. It, it's, it's very unkind what is said there. But how many things did they miss? The types of Christ in the Old Testament they didn't see. You, you, you think about how well it started. Joseph is, it goes to his brothers. He's just had a dream. And he says, guys, I've got a secret. You need to hear it. Now the problem was they hated Joseph. And so that started their blindness. And Joseph said, one day this is going to happen. And they're like, ah, we don't want to hear it. And then Mom and dad, same thing. We're not going to worship you, Joseph. It's not going to happen. Blindness. They, they missed the sacrifices and the offerings. They missed the temple, the tabernacle. They missed all of that. They missed the holiest of holies. They were blind to all of that. What are we blind to? Their persistent blindness. How are we saved? By hearing the gospel? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Is that salvation? It's actually believing the gospel, isn't it? Because I heard it, and I heard it, and I heard it. I remember hearing the gospel. Uh, we, did, we did a wordless book in, in camp this year, and I remember having a wordless book given to me when I was five years old. I don't know how tall I was at five, uh, you know, but when I was five years old, I got a wordless book. And I went looking for it a few weeks later because I wanted to look at it again. And my mother said, I found it and there was nothing in it, so I threw it away. Well, Mom, it was a wordless book. <laughs> and I, but I didn't really understand that. But I wanted to understand it. I, I'm not blaming Mom, but I wish I'd have looked a little harder for that wordless book. It may have been in the garbage right then. But the persistent blindness and they replaced scriptures they looked for something else remember the stoning of Stephen Stephen is preaching the gospel Stephen is telling them shame on you because you killed Christ he came to you he was you he, he was part of you he was born of you and you saw him and you didn't receive him you killed him and what did they do to Stephen while Stephen stood before them glowing right it says that Stephen's face shined, and they saw it. Now, I hope you know this about, in, in those days, they would have a hole that they would put a man in that he really couldn't get out of because they would pick up stones about the size of his head. They didn't pick up little stones and try to hit him. They picked up big stones, as big as his head, and they hurled them at him in the corner of a hole that they had dug just for that purpose 
So they couldn't miss. And by the way, if they did miss, if they threw enough stones in there, they were just going to cover him up. He was going to die. And yet those men saw something strange about him, and yet they still stoned him. They saw something different. They saw something wonderful. And what did Stephen see? One of the most beautiful portions of Scripture. He saw Christ go from a sitting position at the right hand of God, standing up, welcoming his good and faithful servant. Is that us? Or have we hardened ourselves? Have we said that I don't believe this, I don't get this? Have we replaced it with something? You know, there's a, there's a lot of replacement theology going around. Some people think that the Israelite, that the, the church has replaced the Jews, the Israelites. We haven't. It hasn't happened, period. Anybody that believes that, that's wrong theology. Amen. If you want to argue, I'll argue with you. That's not true. That's not right. You can't prove it from this Bible that I carry. It hasn't happened. It won't happen. God is Israel. They are the wife of God. The body of Christ is the bride of Christ. The wife of God, the bride of Christ. Did I say that wrong? The wife of God, the bride of Christ. Two different things, two different entities that never the twain shall meet, so that we know that. But there's a blindness, such a, such a blindness there. Stephen's face glowed, but it was temporary. He didn't have to put a veil over his face because they put rocks over his face. But he was stoned for it. Moses also glowed. What did the Apostle Paul see on the, the road? What did Paul see? You remember? Saul of Tarsus. He saw a bright light. But it doesn't say that his face ever shined, right? I, I'm going back to just the veil that Moses had to put on his face to cover that. Uh, and and it, it says here, Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. There's two different sides to this veil. This veil covered the face. This veil made it so that the glow was being covered up so they could look, but also a part of that was they also were going to see this fading away of the glory of, that he had in his face from spending time with God, which was showing the glory fading of the law. Okay? And so not only that, but the second part of that was Moses was not able to communicate. Remember, remember when we still wear masks now? Have you ever gone up to somebody with a mask? I know. I was just going to tell you something. I just wanted to say this. And you huh? I'm hard of hearing. So I've had people say something to me eight or nine times. Would you pull your mask down? You're behind glass. You don't, can, you, can you speak louder? Now, people don't really have a problem hearing this loud mouth, but there are some people that just don't speak loud. I wish everyone had a voice like this, but they don't. <clears throat> so it had those two aspects. It hindered the glow, but it also hindered his ability to communicate. So the, 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 the glory of the, the law was was going away because Christ was coming. Christ was going to die. That glory was going away. They didn't see, it says they didn't see that which was to be abolished. That which was to be abolished was something that would to be rendered completely useless. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But that that the natural man can be a religious man, can he? The natural man can be a moral man but he's blind apart from a proper relationship with Jesus Christ. The Jews were very moral. They were very religious, and yet they had no relationship with Christ, those who practiced Judaism. The natural man can be such. The spiritual significance is lost to the Jews. It's a hindrance to the Jews. It's a, it's a stumbling stone, a rock of offense. They cannot see the glory of the law. And the law could not communicate its glory to them. The law shows me that I'm a dirty, rotten scoundrel. I'm filthy. I'm unclean. I'm undone. And yet, there's blood that can be shed that can temporarily cover my sins. Temporarily, I should see in that. As a Jew, I should see that, wait. That's a picture of what's going to happen in the future. And they were blinded to it. 
Peter, uh, John, the apostles witnessed the glory of God standing with Jesus Christ and how long were they blinded to who he was how often did the Lord say and he said this to Peter Peter said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and a little bit later what did he say what did Christ say to Peter get thee behind me Satan he it was a it was a little bit it started to open up a little bit thou art the Christ you couldn't just know that, Peter. The Holy Spirit had to reveal that to you. And yet, it was like he had, had one eye covered and couldn't quite see out of the other eye, right? <coughs> Peter saw the glory. A Christ-rejecting religion. So we have a persistent blindness of the Jews, and they replaced the Scriptures and that replacement theology, but they didn't just replace it with a few things. They replaced it with the Talmud. They replaced it with legalism. They replaced it with walking away from even Judaism altogether, probably, some of them, and not practicing that at all. Uh, how many times I've, I've witnessed to people, I remember a guy, uh, this guy was a painter in Marietta, Ohio. He had a name that was a mouthful, Dante Colombini, an Italian guy, Dante Colombini. And he, 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 he said to me one day, he said, I see all your religious things around here. And I said, there no, there's nothing religious here. I said, this is about a relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, tried that, been there, done that, got the medals. I said, well, you never really tried Christ. He said, no, I have. I said, no, Dante, you've never tried Christ. Because when you try him for real, you can't leave him. I mean, obviously you can continue to sin, but when you try him, you'll see that he's for real. But a Christ-rejecting religion causes a spiritual blindness, a rejection of Christ, right? Go to the world. Go to the world and preach the gospel about God, about how wonderful God is, about how loving God is. We serve a God who's tremendous. But when you name the one name, the name that is above every name, the name by which we all will bow and worship one day. When you say the name of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden, there's a dividing line. All of a sudden, people don't want to hear. All of a sudden, they're like, wait a minute, now you've started, you've started to meddle. I don't want to talk about that. A spiritual blindness, rejection of Christ. Ray Steadman had, had this in, in, in a sermon from this portion of Scripture. A rabbi, what this is from Ray Steadman, uh, a rabbi was defending Judaism to a young man who was questioning its truth and its power. This is what the rabbi said. We Jews have rejected the Gentile Christian view. Judaism, as shaped by our rabbis, as shaped by our, Judaism should never have been shaped by anyone but the word of God and God himself, right? As shaped by our rabbis in Palestine, conceived of the body, that is our physical bodies, as a gift of God. And to this day, we regard the body as holy and wholesome, not as a prison from which to escape. Any inclination by man to commit a wrongdoing, we hold any inclination by man to commit a wrongdoing we hold resides not in his body but in his heart or mind and this inclination can be overcome by a change of heart or mind thus man by himself does possess indeed man by himself does possess indeed the power to atone for his own misdeeds and we Jews have in our Torah, the Old Testament, the guidance directing our hearts and minds to righteous living. And what did Isaiah say about that? Even my righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Even my good deeds are as filthy rags. And this, I mean, it's, it's obvious that's the way Judaism believes. That's what this rabbi is trying to say. I hope that young man got it and said, finished with Judaism, I'm going to move on to a true life in Christ. Um, uh, Psalm 82.5, 
they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course Psalm 82 5 Micah 4 12 Micah 4 12 but they know not the thoughts of the Lord neither understand they his counsel sure it's it's clear isn't it second Timothy 3 7 ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth Turn to John chapter 5, verses 31 to 39. I went through those other verses quickly, but John chapter 5, verses 31 to 39. I think I'm going to read a little farther there. John 5, beginning in 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. Again, this rabbi that was trying to explain to this young man miss this completely he didn't grasp this that Christ is saying but I receive not testimony from man but think but these things I say that you might be saved he was a burning and a shining light and you are willing for a season to rejoice in his light but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the father hath given me to finish the same works that I do bear witness of me that the father hath sent me and the father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me ye have neither heard this voice at any time nor seen his shape and you have not heard his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent him ye believe not search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life and they are they which testify of me and you will not come to me that you might have life it's amazing to me but we also at one point in our lives could put ourselves there as well we were blind we were we were hardened we didn't want to hear those things search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me the spiritual blindness the spiritual death that the unbeliever will suffer but we need to be careful because I had a list one time. I had a list of things I wouldn't do. I stopped drinking alcohol. I stopped smoking. I found out you couldn't dance. I, I wouldn't cuss. <laughs> My list. I wouldn't hang around with those who do all of those things, and etc. I had a list, and so help me, if I saw you doing those things, huh, you wicked individual. I mean, I had my list. We still carry a list with us. Sometimes we get our list out and we're like, yeah. <laughs> we do that, don't we? What are we doing? We've gone back and we've grabbed our law. We've sat with our law and we've made little notations on which one of those I'll keep and which I can't keep. And by the way, if you're not, I'm watching you. You know what we do. I'm watching you. And really, it, there, there's not much difference here because all of a sudden, I, I have, I, I'm, I'm saved, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to heaven, I've got my fire insurance, but I'm, I'm young, I'm, I'm immature, I haven't grown into the things that I need to grow into, and so there's a little bit of blindness, and which direction am I going to grow? Into the law? The first couple that Sonny and I served with in, in South Africa gave people the law. Stop doing this, and start doing that and stop doing this and start doing that and you'll be right with God you know what God says come to me as you are without any plan of staying as you are now these are some of my words I know that but let me God talking here let me transform you 
by the washing, uh, the regeneration of the Word of God living in your life. When it says search the Scriptures, it doesn't mean just search a few of the New Testament Scriptures. It doesn't mean just search the all of the New Testament. It means search from in the beginning in Genesis to Amen in Revelation. All of those. Search the Scriptures. Since he says that, it's easy to find Christ on the pages of the New Testament. But how do I find Christ on the pages of the Old Testament? By looking at the typology. Looking at those people, Joseph, David at times. David, a man after God's own heart. And yet David sinned. Uh, Daniel, uh, there's nothing negative said about Joseph, nothing negative said about Daniel, nothing negative said about Nehemiah. You suppose those guys ever sinned? You can all agree they did because they're human beings with a sin nature. Surely they sinned. But they, they had their eyes opened to a true and living God and a relationship with him through, in some cases, what was happening in, in the future, in Jesus Christ coming to this earth. And um, if we who are filled with the Holy Spirit cannot successfully and effectively keep the law. I was told by somebody once that once you get saved, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you will help you keep the law. And I thought that was so cool. I get to keep the law. Only ever been one who kept the law and couldn't break it and never broke it, Jesus Christ. None of the rest of us could do that. But even if I did, what would it fulfill in me? If I kept the law from beginning to end, what would it mean for me? It wouldn't mean salvation. Because salvation is by grace through faith in Christ. The world needs to see that. The world needs to see that in us. Those of us who aren't hardened to the word of God. Who are living a life that is pleasing to God. Who are teaching those these things. He who has eyes to see, let him see. He who has eyes to see. Do you have eyes to see? You've seen the uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Sometimes we think that that, that should be the way that I am. I, I've got to keep the law, and if I do, then I will never see evil. In, in the hospital with Ed, that guy next to him would use the Lord's name in vain about 74 times, and he used other words about 90 times. I don't know. He just, he, he just, you know, constantly. And Ed would jump. He just, I mean, he would wince. And at first I thought, Ed, it, it, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm well acquainted with the sin. He's an unbeliever. He's going to act like an unbeliever. His heart is hardened, and it's getting harder maybe. Uh, but, but you've got to be careful not to to think ill of him. Why? In the sense that he's an unbeliever doing what an unbeliever does. I'm surprised when I hear a cat bark. You ever hear a cat bark? That should surprise us. You ever hear a dog go, meow? Nope. We should be surprised. We should be surprised when an unbeliever, when an unbeliever is living a Christian life. It should be like, whoa, that isn't possible. Because it really isn't. It really is not. But when this removal of this blindness, then re the reinstated Messiah, all of a sudden, and, and the, 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 the scales came off of our eyes, or our eyes were open, or we were, we were softened to the gospel, whatever we want to call what happened to us. When finally that one day, a friend of mine knocked on my door, said, would you and your wife want to come and, and fill a, a pew for me, because I'll get a prize if you guys come. And, and he thought I was a Christian, and I'm like, yeah. Let's go do her. Let's get her done. I went in and sat down, and that preacher, I thought my wife had called him up. That preacher kept looking at me and saying, Cecil. He never said my name, but I heard him, and I'm like, how do these people know? What's going on here? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me that night that I was not saved. When I walked up front, I was just walking up front to tell everybody that I was rededicating my life to Christ. Now, I, I would, that, that change had already been made because I already realized I was a sinner. I already realized by that man's preaching and the Holy Spirit working in me that the, the, the scales were gone. 
And I realized, and I walked up front thinking that I was going to bow down and say, Lord, help me to live this Christian life before you. And I bowed down and I said, Lord, save me. Because I'm lost. And I'm going to a godless eternity. And I need you to save me. And he did. And I'm so thankful that he did that. I'm thankful that he's used me. Ed keeps messaging me. He thinks I'm already finished. I'm going to give him what for later. <clears throat> Take off the veil. <clears throat> I'll never forget that day when I took off the veil of someone. She wore that veil down front. Of course, it didn't cover too much. You know, those veils don't really cover too much. And I already saw that beauty behind that veil. And that guy said, she's yours, Cecil. Lay one on her. Okay, that's not exactly what he said. But I pulled that veil off. And I kiss my wife fully on the face. <laughs> She's mine. But that veil was removed. Now I could see her completely. We need that veil removed if we're an unbeliever. If, if, if there's hardness in our heart and we're not seeing it, if we're living the law, we need to have that veil removed. If we're struggling in some way, remove the veil. Let the Holy Spirit remove the veil. It, it, it's unhealthy. It's wrong for us. So he who has eyes to see, let him see. Uh, that verse 18. Uh, let me go back to 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, when any one shall turn to the Lord, that veil shall be taken away. But it might mean when the nation of Israel has that veil removed. But it could refer to us as well. When a person turns to the Lord, then that veil will be removed. And the veil shall be taken away. Verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord gives us the liberty, the freedom to be able to see and understand. It is the Lord is the Spirit. Now that, that's just an interesting phrase there, and I won't try to it, tell everything that that means. But obviously, this is, this is taking two parts of the Godhead and using them, the Spirit and the, the Lord Christ here. And it might mean the Lord God and the Lord Christ and the Spirit. Maybe the Trinity is here. But the point that I'm trying to make here is, and I think this is, that we need that spirit where the Lord shows us. Because I can't show myself. I can't just open my eyes and see. Because my eyes are already open, I think. It takes the, the Holy Spirit to open my eyes, my understanding. The Lord is the Spirit. Albert Barnes says this in 2 Corinthians uh, 3.16, that verse. Uh, um here he says that the Lord Jesus was the spirit to which he referred and by which he was enabled to understand the Old Testament so as to speak plainly and without obscurity. The sense is that Christ was the spirit, the sum, the substance of the Old Testament, the figures, the types, the prophecy, all centered in him, and he was the end of all those institutions. If contemplated as having reference to him, it was easy to understand them. And so he is that spirit of understanding. He's that spirit of prophecy. He's that spirit of the typology from the word of God. You know, there are some who think that it's okay to pray to a human being because they consider her the mother of God. And that isn't right. But they blinded themselves to who she really is because they don't see who her son truly is, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, if they would read the Bible, I wonder if that church would read the Bible if many of them wouldn't walk away from that belief system and come to know Christ. Verse 18, when we look at the mirror of the word, we see his glory and that it has transforming power to make us in the image of Christ. He will rule one day. He wants to rule in our heart today. And as Psalm 95 reminds us, don't harden your heart as in that day of provocation and Masa and Meribah. Don't be that who mumbles. Second Peter 3, 3 to 7, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, 
and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Those with a hardness of heart will die and go to a godless eternity. Those who have opened the law of liberty, as James says, and realizes that that is a liberty that transforms us into the image of Christ will be glorified with him because our eyes have been opened by the word being used by the Holy Spirit in these sinful hearts of ours. Are you a believer today? If not, come to know Christ before it's too late. If you're a believer and you aren't living as you should, don't live by the law. Live by the word of God working in your heart and your life. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for what you'll do and for who you are. Thank you for teaching us from your word. And I pray as we continue to do some things here, I ask, Father, that as you are here in our midst, may you give us wisdom, give us strength. Thank you for the direction that you'll give, and may we see it. And Father, again, I pray for that one who's here that's unsaved. May they come to know you today. And may we who know you never fail to give you praise for all things. In Christ's name, amen. Tim, please turn to page 96 in the hymnal. <clears throat> oh God, our help in ages past, page 96. Help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her praise. From everlasting Thou art God to endless years the same. Time like an ever rolling stream bears all its sons away. They've time forgotten as a dream lies at the opening day. In ages past, our hope for years to come. Be thou our guide while troubles last, and our eternal In Romans chapter 15, Paul said, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen. Thank you, sir. <clears throat>